Okay, part two, we have World Microservice. We implement the core layer, which is our business implementation. And it's time for infrastructure. But what is infrastructure? Infrastructure is a layer that communicates with outside world. So it's very important on microservices to implement it correctly because you're communicating with your microservices. So it's important to use service discovery and don't make them dependent. On each other. If you didn't see my previous video about real world microservice part one, just go watch it. On this part, I'm gonna implement the infrastructure and endpoint. So just pay attention, please, and let's start. So we have order service command db context, and it's inheritance from base command db context. As you see, I have db set name outbox event items. But what is outside event items? Outside event items is a pattern that we can use to save our events into our database and using pulling publisher or other patterns to send these messages to message bus later. Order service command db context inherited from base outbox command db context. And base outbox command db context is an abstract class which inherited from base command db context. But on outbox command db context, we have access to the Outbox event items, which is a pattern on a microservice, which helps us to save the events on Outbox event items table on our database. And with pulling publisher, we publish those events to services who subscribe our events. So we publish the events to message broker and message broker publishes to services which subscribe those events. So, and on base command DB context, we have access to the rollback and commit transaction. And on base DB context, uh, we have shadow properties and commit transaction and all this stuff has been modified. And on base command db context, begin transaction, rollback transaction, and commit transaction has been modified uh, to log and throw exception. Okay. And on shadow property, we have created date, modified date, created by, and modified by properties. So as you see, on this method, all of the value object on Xamarin, such as description, title, business ID, uh, they have some conversion for it. And you don't need to write the conversion code each time for your each entities. Let's back to order command db context. So on here, we have to add our features db sets. So we developed order feature. So let's add the folder feature directory on here, orders. And on our orders, we have to add config configs directory throughout our entity configs. We are developing comments. So on config, let me add order configs. Order configs. Order config, okay. And I have to implement I entity type configuration. So, and I, must pass the order entity to it. So let me implement this and implement, okay. It's EF core feature that allows us to configure our entity type on building. So I have builder right here. I can choose property from it and say order dot, for example, customer ID, it's required and okay, it's value object, this business value object, I have to add conversion for it. So on conversion, first I have to pass the value that must be saved on database. So I can use customer ID that uh, we can name it CI or customer ID or C. That value is a uh, value that must be saved on database. And for converting back to value object, we have to define like we have to use business ID that business ID business ID that from GUID and I have to pass the customer ID to it. Okay. And now we defined our conversion. Okay. All the relation that your entity has must be taken care of on here. So let's go to create at and it's just required. It's not important. So some value object or something. So just put the is required on it. Okay. And we implement the order config. It's time to add 
order line config. All the aggregate entities config must be here. So, oh, and don't forget to put order and order line relation to it. We, we're gonna do it after I implement I order line configuration. So let's implement I order line config for it. I, it's happened, okay. Order line entity configuration, entity configuration, okay. And I have to pass order line entity for it. Line, okay. Let me implement it, okay. And on here, I have to use builder that property. You can use ol as order line, so ol dot price is a value object, and I have to conversion conversion it. And like this, I use ol. No, I use p dot p dot value and. For converting it back, I use price that from decimal, price that from decimal, and I pass P and is required, and we're done. We configure our price entity, price property, and it's time for other properties like uh, oil dot quantity, and it's just required. Okay, and it's time for other property name oil dot product ID which is business ID and I already wrote business ID conversion so I'm copying this and use it right here and let me just use business ID okay okay it's time to add order and order line relations but but I missed something on order line class, I missed order ID. I'm sorry, okay. I missed order ID, business ID, order ID, ID, and prop order relation between aggregate and entity. So, and on constructor, I have to add order ID too. So I do it like this, C to F, C to P. And on core application service order command and create handler, I have to add order ID too. So I use entity that business ID. Oh, and it's not gonna be on here. And let me add event later. And okay, it's good to go. Let's back to order config and let me add builder that's order line builder that has many order line with order with one order and foreign key of order ID. So and on order line config I have to add first order ID conversion. Let me just add it order ID and builder has one order with many order lines has foreign key of order. Okay. And this is how we manage the relation between these two entities. Entities. So let's back to contract and see what we have. On order, we create the I order command repository and I order query repository, and we have to implement those on here. On order SQL commands. So on infra layer data SQL commands, we have to implement I order command repository. Guys, I'm teaching you about real-world microservice development. And this is how I develop. I first start with domain layer and I create my entities and my aggregate and my value object. Then I go for contracts to implement the contract that I need to work with this project. Case by case, I develop the contract and then I go for application service. And, in, and if I forgot something, I back and implement it. And now it's time to infrastructure. So I start with command, then query, then outside world like APIs and at last I go to endpoint. Let's back to implementing SQL commands. We have created our config and it's time to implement our repository. So let me add I order command repository. Repository. And we have some base command repository on Xami. First we have to pass aggregate truth which is order. Then we have to pass the db context, which is 
order service db context db context okay then we're gonna implement this missing member so which is a constructor that gives a db context to base class which is base command repository and i have to implement the i order command repository so we define the order command repository base command repository implements the ef core for our contracts that we have on command repository which is a delete insert get and exist and i told you before why we are using exist on our command because on cqrs many times our our databases are separated we have command database and we have query database and it might be a delay on syncing a data so if you have your customized methods on order repository you can implement it implement those two let's back to order service command db context and let's add our db set for order order and i name it orders orders and if i want to use ef or six null ever reference i have to do it like this order set order and done okay and we have order line don't forget your entities when you're adding your aggregate routes so let me add order lines and here order line okay let me just back on order command repository and give you a hint if you have some method on your entity for example order line and you need to implement repository for it put your contracts on aggregate repository for example i need to check order line existence i can use i can define a, a contract on order line command repository and implement it on order repository so this is pretty much our sql commands and, and let's go to queries we have same structure on every single part of our application we have to create our direct feature directory in this case it's order so on queries we have order service query db context we need models on our queries because we cannot use entity for reading our queries so we need model for example if you are using a mongodb for your query database you have to have different models we are separating our read and write behavior so we cannot use the same entity and if we use entity we are exposing our domain engineering so we must use model for query we must add models for each entity that we are extracting information from so we need models you can use ef core escape folder when you create your database and just scaffold your models from your database and put it on your model folder so remember if you want to use your if you want to create your model you can use scaffold from ef core so but on here i don't have i didn't create my command db context for creating that we need to first fix our connection string which is on the endpoint but i'm on but, but we are on query so i just add the class name order on my model let me just put the prop business id for it prop guid business id and i just want to skip this part i don't want to use a scaf folding right now i'm using business id i'm implementing business id here business id and the others i don't need right now so let's back to orders feature i have to implement my order query repository on here repository repository okay and i need to implement the base query repository it doesn't have any implementation on base query repository it just gives me the db context it's not very much and it helps me to escape the registering lifetime of ioc on the parameter over here i have to pass the order service query context and it's from implementation so let me implement that on base repository we just it just handle the uh, db context implementation for me let's make it easier so i have to implement my order query order query repository which is here so let me implement it okay i have to implement the missing members like select and base repository here okay and on select method i have to write my query to extracting information from database so if you're using mongodb you have to write 
you cannot use EF code, you have to use Mongo driver for this purpose. Okay. Let me show you that you can use ChatGPT to be faster on development. It's 2.23 and we have to be modern. So let's use ChatGPT to speed up. And let me ask you to implement the select method for me. Implement, implement, select method. Okay, it's implementing the method for me, so it's not bad, it's okay, I can accept this method. But we have very if method on Xamin, which helps us to avoid writing if condition like this. You done it, it's very clean, and I told you before, we are living on 2023. So we have to use modern technology like ChatGPT, so to speed up our project. So let me ask you to use, use where if, which I implemented before, where if, to avoid, use where if, okay. okay. It uses the where if method, which we have it on Xamin, and it's very clean. And we can write some method name to page data and avoid doing this repeatable stuff like new some page and all stuff. Okay, I use ChatGPT to implement the select method, but some of these property are different with mine. So if you give the right information to ChatGPT, it could help you to write better stuff. But I didn't uh, define the order DB set on my query. So let me just add it prop DB set. I will, and I'm still telling you use scaffolding but i don't have sql installed on my system so i must do it like this order model you have to use order model be careful don't use entity on your query db context orders okay and let me use set order uh -huh, done no no be careful. Okay. And on here, I have very if on Xamin. So let, let's use Xamin and I don't have start date. I don't have start date and all this stuff. I just have customer ID and create at. So let me just change the very if to customer ID and customer ID equals this is not UID empty, not UID empty, empty and the customer ID equals order dot. Oh, I didn't. Let me just let me just bring this order stuff on that. An order model. So let me just bring this on order model and I don't want to waste your time on this is stuff they are basic stuff that any developer knows so customer ID equal query that customer ID and let me just do the create at to date that date time it doesn't matter We have to, I don't want to use very for created at, I want to just pass it, pass it like create at equal query that create at. Create at. I want to speed up and okay. And get queries if we want to do the paging behavior, we have to use page data on Xamarin. And we need base model and I pass the get orders query to page model. Okay, let's back to here. We can write the paging uh, to page result method and implement the sort on there, but I don't want to waste your time on the sorting. We can, you can use chat GPT to write the sort method. And let me just select, fix this, select the order and finish this select method. Okay, order that customer ID, customer ID. 
and created equals o dot created and order lines equal new order line DTO and o dot and no, I don't want new order line equal o dot order lines o dot order lines. I don't have order line. Oh man, come on. Okay, I don't want to pass the order line. You have to create the order line list on your model right here. You have to order. You have to create your order line model and your queries and add the stuff. Okay, but I don't want to. I just want to implement these two method, these two properties. I want to fill these two properties and at last the query result equal order DTO and total count equal total count. And I don't want to implement all this stuff because it's gonna it's too much for this course. Okay, we implement our SQL queries and it's time for relationing between and it's time for customer service API implementation. We have I customer service which which get some information from customer microservice and it's time to implement it. But I will talk about this subject. This topic on advanced microservice communication, which, which is the next part that I told you before, and we're gonna implement events, APIs, and commands on microservices. So uh, let's implement the endpoint API and finish our job on here. Okay, it's time to implement endpoint layer, which is a main layer that we provide some API and our clients could use our application. So before I start developing this project, I want to tell you about endpoint on Xamarin. So you have to check it. Let's go to GitHub and check Xamarin. If you worked with Xamarin before, you know about old structure. The previous version of Xamarin is on here. So if you go on SRC, if you go on sample and on endpoint, you will see app setting that Xamarin that JSON. All your project configuration is here and you can change it easily right here. But there are many problems with it. And on, and on current version, an onion sample endpoint, Mr. Uruman, changes behavior to registering our needs by registering our configuration by services. Look at here. On hosting ex extension, you register all the services that you need. For example, you need parrot translator, you need common dispatcher, you need user information, you need, you need user info, you need uh, automapper, all the services that you need. You register here and use it on your application. So why did he do that? Because it's more modular and you can use the, and the previous version was very heavy, but on current version, it's more module and each module you need, you can install on your project and use it. For example, you need RabbitMQ, you need user service, all these abstractions are on Xamarin and you can install the package and use them. So we are using Onion and we have to register all the services on our application. What what do I mean by Onion? Look at Xamarin. There are extensions, Onion, utilities, and all the structure. Just ignore the all the structure and the extensions and utilities are what we need. On the extension, all the modules that we need to develop application, for example, caching, dependency injection, events, and message bus are in there. And there are some abstraction. You can install any get package for which one we need and use it. Okay, let's start development. Let's start by feature, orders feature. So let me just create the orders directory right here, orders, and let's add our controller. Right click on orders, add, and controller, name it orders controller, and done. On Xamarin, there's a class named base control. Instead of inheritance from controller base, you must implement base control. Why? Let's go and figure it out. On base controller, you have access to the controller and there are some methods that help you implementing your endpoints easier. Why? Look at here. You have command, command dispatcher, you have query dispatcher, you have event dispatcher, you have Xamarin application context here. You can return Excel, you can create, edit, create, edit, and delete something by using these methods, just passing the command, and you don't need to implement the command dispatcher and invoke the command and Xamarin will do it for you. And you have the Xamarin services, you have access to the Xamarin services right here. So by inheriting from this, let's start writing our methods. Okay, let me define HTTP get verb right here, HTTP get and public 
async task i action result async task i action result i action result and let's name it get orders so and i have to pass get orders query to my method right here query so instead of writing the whole code for using command dispatcher and all this stuff i just have to return f8 query and get order query and what will my query return i have to pass the result to it type of result which is which returns page data or the detail so uh, there's something wrong with it so let me check i'm sorry i made some mistakes and it's not true we have to we have to inheritance from page query and on the page query we have to pass the result that we want to return which is page data order detail order detail it's, it's my query model page data give me access to pagination on my apis and page query is a type that gets query on my which we must use it so please just know this we have to implement on the page data we have to inheritance from page query on queries but if we didn't return page data and you didn't find use sort page number page size skip count and all this stuff you can implement i query which is interface on Xamarin, which page query implemented from and just pass the model that you want to return to your client so i'm and again i'm sorry for this mistake and just notice on Xamarin. back to our code on page data we wrote our query and it's, it looks like it's fine and let's write the create method so i need HTTP post on here, HTTP post on here, and public async task i action result create order. So I pass create order order command to my method and name it create command, or, or you can just name it command. It's shorter version return f8 so we have to return f8 create and just pass your comment to it you don't need to pass your argument generator argument generic to it so it's done and we wrote our create comment so before we continue i just want to back to application service orders command handler and on create command handler an entity, an order entity, I just want to tell you that instead of getting the customer ID from client, which is a wrong thing, to, which is not okay to do it, if you have eShop, it's not okay to do this. You must use uh, Xamarin services and from there, on Xamarin services, Xamarin services, and from user info service, you must get user ID. Instead of getting a customer ID and let the user fill the customer ID. But if your staff do that for you, you must let them fill themselves. It's based on your business. I just want to tell you that you can do this on some situation if you are implementing the implementing that kind of business. If you need user ID or anything else, you can use Xamarin service, Xamarin services, which provides many, many classes here, which logger, cache, mapper, and user service, even translator and serializer. You don't need to use other packages. Xamarin is provides you very, very great packages. And we didn't implement the queries. Oh, that's too bad. We have to implement it right now. On endpoint, we just implement our features and it's basically this. We, we don't need anything. We, we don't need any more endpoints. We just need this. Basically, I can I can tell you that for you, each one of your use cases on your, your application service, you must write some endpoint for it. You must write endpoint for it. So, before we continue on endpoint, let's just back to queries and implement the implement the use case that we missed. And it's get orders on queries, get orders, let's add get order query handler to our project. So get order query handler, get order query handler. So we must inherit it from query handler and query handler and we have to pass our query to our query handler. So let me just write get order query and on query handler you must give the T data which is your which is the data that your query returns and we return page data right here and order detail type of order detail. So 
let me implement this and we are good to go. On here, I don't have my repository right here. So let me just add private only I order query repository, which is here, order query repository. And let me just use Ctor F key on my right there to inject the order query repository. So on here, based on my query, I have to get orders from my database. So as you know, get query, get orders query is request that user sent us and it has our business. This is a request that user sent us and we have to filter our data with it. So let me define the variable name res as a result because I cannot use results because result is examining using results on query handler. If you go on query handle, the field named result, we have some field name results as you see right here. See, told you. So you cannot use results. You have to use, you can use a res or something else and use evade and order query repository and select method and pass your query to your select method. You have to return result async, which is a method on get query handler, which help us to return data and you can set your application status to whatever you want it. So I just wanna go with defaults, which is okay. The status code 200 and let me just pass the result to it and I missed await keyword. So we defined it, our query handler and we are done. We don't need anything more on application service. Okay, back to endpoints. On endpoints, we have on extension, we have hosting extension, which I told you on Xamarin. But let me just show you again. And on here, you will see the implementation that I told you before. So it's time to explain some of this stuff to you. Okay, but except hosting extension, we have dependency injection, which is identity server, identity server, which have some extension on identity server, which helps you a lot to adding identity server on your microservices. You don't need to write it again. It just implemented it on here and you have some swagger extension filters and all this stuff on here at parameter header, which helps you a lot on Dustin 7, which we, you can, you have a developer token for JWT. It helps you a lot actually. So enough with this and let's back to hosting extension. As you see, uh, we have builder services that add Xamarin API core, which, which is a class that adds all the Xamarin dependency and fluent validation and all this stuff on there. So if you go on Xamarin dependency, you will see application service. You will see you have customer dependency, which is interfaces that when you use them, you will have the lifetime that you implement. For example, on here we have transient lifetime. If you implement this interface, you will have transient lifetime without registering on service builder on your ASP.NET Core app. Just implement this and it just add lifetime that you needed to. So it, it have transient scope and singleton. So enough with this and let's back to Xamarin Hussing, let's back to Hussing extension. Okay. And add Xamarin API Core, you will see the services, assembly load and all this stuff on your parameter. So it added API Explorer, it added User service, it added a translator and non validating validator, Microsoft serializer and auto mapper in memory cache and other stuff. And other stuff. Okay. So on builder service at db context, you will see it added my command db context and down you will see the query db context, which added for me. It uses SQL server and it passed my connection string to it. So go on your app setting and change your connection, command db context connection on it. So it even had pulling publisher, which is a outbox even item and pulling publisher are patterns which publish your message to message brokers. So it added message inbox, which is inbox for our RabbitMQ messages and it's save the ID, the message ID that it's uh, it handler. So it added swagger and all this stuff. We have some extension named configure pipeline, which configure our middle ways and we can use it. So if you're using identity server, you just uncomment this stuff. If you're using a feature that is comment on here, you must uncomment it and check the app setting too. So so on program, you will see serial layer extension, which runs the action and logs all the handling process. On builder, it creates builder for me. It creates web application builder for me. And I have access on here. I have access to builder right here. 
and on app we will see it added the Xamarin Serial like which you have to define your applications. So set your application name on here, your service ID right here, service name and service version. You, these are the important, these are very important. You must configure this stuff and pay attention to it because on RabbitMQ and your message bus uses them to configure, uh, to communicate. So, and at the end, it uses app.run to run our application. So all the default configuration has been took care of and if you need something to change just don't forget to change it on app setting and hosting extension for example if you want to change your connection strings you have to go here and if you don't like command db context for this just uh, if you want to change the name don't forget to change it on hosting extension so one thing that i missed rabbit mq if you want to use message worker just uncomment the rabbit mq part and Pass the configuration to it. You can use app setting configuration, which is better, but if you don't like this way, you can just pass it through the Lambda expression, like here, like, like this, and just define your services right here. So for example, gives you some service here, for example, service, I ask for service on my parameter and it gives you service and you have to define the, it gives you some option, it gives you some option, let me add option of a parameter and an option that you can configure configure your message bus. You will see the methods that you need on your application. So, okay, that's it. We are finished to develop our application, but we are not done. We didn't use events and we didn't implement the other, we didn't implement the communication yet. So it's enough for this uh, video and don't forget to watch the next video, which is advanced communication on microservice so don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and leave comments for me <laughs>